An angel came to me and said, O oh, pitiable, foolish young man, O oh, horrible, O oh, dreadful state, consider the hot burning dungeon thou art preparing for thyself to all eternity, to which thou art going in such career. I said, Perhaps you will be willing to show me my eternal lot, and we will contemplate together upon it and see whether your lot or mine is most desirable. So he took me through a stable and through a church, and down into the church vault, at the end of which was a mill. Through the mill we went and came to a cave. Down the winding cavern we groped our tedious way, till a void, boundless as a nether sky, approached beneath us and we held by the roots of trees, and hung over this immensity. But I said, If you please, we will commit ourselves to this void, and see whether providence is here also. If you will not, I will. But he answered, Do not presume, O young man, but as we here remain, behold thy lot which will soon appear when the darkness passes away. So I remained with him, sitting in the twisted root of an oak. He was suspended in a fungus which hung with the head downward into the deep. By degrees we beheld the infinite abyss, fiery as the smoke of a burning city. Beneath us, at an immense distance, was the sun, black but shining. Round it were fiery tracks on which revolved vast spiders crawling after their prey, which flew, or rather swum, in the infinite deep, in the most terrific shapes of animals sprung from corruption, and the air was full of them, and seemed composed of them. These are devils, and are called powers of the air. I now asked my companion, which was my eternal lot? He said, between the black and white spiders. But now, from between the black and white spiders, a cloud and fire burst and rolled through the deep, blackening all beneath, so that the nether deep grew black as a sea, and rolled with a terrible noise. Beneath us was nothing now to be seen but a black tempest, till, looking east between the clouds and the waves, we saw a cataract of blood mixed with fire, and, not many stones throw from us, appeared and sunk again the scaly fold of a monstrous serpent. At last, to the east, distant about three degrees, appeared a fiery crest above the waves. Slowly it reared like a ridge of golden rocks till we discovered two globes of crimson fire from which the sea fled away in clouds of smoke. And now we saw it was the head of Leviathan. His forehead was divided into streaks of green and purple like those on a tiger's forehead. Soon we saw his mouth and red gills hang just above the raging foam tinging the black deep with beams of blood, advancing towards us with all the fury of a spiritual existence. My friend the angel climbed up from his station into the mill. I remained alone, and then this appearance was no more, but I found myself sitting on a pleasant bank beside a river by moonlight, hearing a harper who sung to the harp, and his theme was... The man who never alters his opinion is like standing water and breeds reptiles of the mind. But I arose and sought for the mill, and there I found my angel, who, surprised, asked me how I escaped. I answered, All that we saw was owing to your metaphysics, for when you ran away, I found myself on a bank by moonlight, hearing a harper. But now we have seen my eternal lot. Shall I show you yours? He laughed at my proposal, but I by force suddenly caught him in my arms and flew westerly through the night till we were elevated above the earth's shadow. Then I flung myself with him directly into the body of the sun. Here I clothed myself in white and taking in my hand Swedenborg's volumes, sunk from the glorious climb and passed all the planets till we came to Saturn. Here I stayed to rest, and then leaped into the void between Saturn and the fixed stars. Here, said I, is your lot, in this space, if space it may be called. 
Soon we saw the stable and the church, and I took him to the altar and opened the Bible, and lo, it was a deep pit, into which I descended, driving the angel before me. Soon we saw seven houses of brick. One we entered. In it were a number of monkeys, baboons, and all that species, chained by the middle, grinning and snatching at one another, but withheld by the shortness of their chains. However, I saw that they sometimes grew numerous, and then the weak were caught by the strong, and with a grinning aspect first coupled with, and then devoured by plucking off the first one limb and then another, till the body was left a helpless trunk. This, after grinning and kissing it with seeming fondness, they devoured too, and here and there I saw one savourly picking the flesh off his own tail. As the stench terribly annoyed us both, we went into the mill, and I in my hand brought the skeleton of a body, which in the mill was Aristotle's analytics. So the angel said, Thy fantasy has imposed upon me, and thou oughtest to be ashamed. I answered, We impose upon one another, and it is but lost time to converse with you, whose works are only analytics. Opposition is true friendship.